Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lightning episode. Today I have Saif with me to talk to me about Azure Arc enabled servers, SCCM, and everything that is in between. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lightning episode. And today I have Saif with me to talk to me about Azure Arc enabled servers and SCCM, everything that is in between. Uh, first thing first, Saif, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Lior. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing great. Uh, this is a very interesting episode, but first first thing first, uh, who you are and what is it that you do? Um, so my name is Saif Bassam. I'm a customer engineer here at Microsoft. Uh, my role is really helping customers be successful on Azure, and I'm also part of the Jumpstart team. And Saif, you joined recently to the Jumpstart team um, after making multiple contributions and this specific topic that we're going to talk about today is a very somewhat of a charge topic, um, you know, when it comes to Azure Arc enabled servers. And I'm, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about that. So give me a bit of background around Azure Arc enabled servers and SCCM and why, you know, it's so interesting. Yes, I agree with you. And when working with customers, I, I usually hear this, that we're, we're using SCCM. Uh, why do, do we want to look at Azure Arc? And isn't this the same? And um, to be honest, th th there is a very fine line between the two uh, technologies uh, when I talk to customers, but there is a huge difference when, um, when you look closely to, to both technologies. Yeah. Um, usually when, when, when I talk to customers, I think the question is not um, this versus that, but I think it's what they're trying to do. So um, if, you, if you think that, uh, for example, you have a fully disconnected environment, you don't have any cloud uh, footprint, that in that case, SCCM might fulfill most of your needs. But on the other side, um, if you have a multi-cloud strategy, you're deploying on Azure and mm -hmm. other uh, other cloud platforms, then things uh, get a little bit interesting. So, you know, uh, when I uh, when I'm having conversation around uh, SCCM and and you know when it comes to scale onboarding, that's where really things starting to be very interesting. And one of the things that you did um, as part of the as part of the Jumpstart is creating those scenarios that showing how you actually go by and using SCCM to do scale onboarding of Azure Arc enabled servers. Now, in you know, in previous episodes and also in our nuts and bolts video series, we 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 talked about the scale onboarding. We talked about the possibilities, but it would ne it was never something that came up um, when it comes to how to use that in the context of SCCM. So today I know that you have a cool demo to show me. Uh, so let's just uh, dive into that and see what we have. Yes, definitely. Um, okay, so let me start first by um, showing my Azure environment. You can see I don't have any uh, Arc servers onboarded, and then uh, we're going to start using Config Manager or SACM to, mm -hmm. to do the, just that. So with the, um, with the Configuration Manager or SCM, you have um, a, a couple of methods that you can use to do the onboarding, and I'm going to mm -hmm. show you some of them today. Um, so here I have um, two collections. I have some database servers, I have some web servers, and I'd like to onboard them to Azure Arc. Mm -hmm. uh, the first method I'm going to show you is using a task sequence. And anyone who's ever worked with uh, SECM knows what a task sequence is. It's basically what, the, what it, the name implies, a group of steps that you would do and run on your, your servers. Mm -hmm. um, so let me show you what I have here. So I have a task sequence that will simply do the two steps of the onboarding. The first mm -hmm. one would be installing the agent on the machines. And uh, the, the next step would be actually um, doing the onboarding or running the connect command to connect this agent to Azure mm -hmm. Arc. So it's, it's a simple PowerShell script. Um, and once I, I, I run this task sequence, the agent is going to get installed. And this is not getting installed from the internet, it's actually SCCM is doing the installation uh, locally from a UNC path, mm -hmm. and, and then the onboarding, the onboarding happens. So, so Saif, um, you know, I noticed that, you know, the partial script, that's actually the script that we are generating as part of the onboarding experience in the portal, right? So nothing, exactly. you know, nothing funky about that. You didn't do anything special here. That's just a partial script that we're generating for you. But the more interesting thing that you mentioned is the, the offline met method that you're using, which is basically putting the agent on a UNC path. And 
talk to me for a second. Why, why is that important? Yeah, that, that's a great point because um, a lot of customers, uh, as I mentioned before, they, they, they have a fully uh, uh, like air gapped servers. They, 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 don't, they don't want to download any software from the internet. So mm. the, the, the script from the onboarding experience actually does that. It goes to the internet, downloads the latest bits of the agents and does that. But with SCCM, it allows you to distribute software from the SCCM server or any file server in your environment. So this satisfies those customers' needs. So usually usually those SCCM server will sit in a you know in a DMZ environment or something like that that is connected to the internet, which is, you know, like I said, is a bit more air gapped. Okay, I got it. Yeah. All right. Sure. So uh, once I have this in place, uh, all I have to do is just deploy this uh, this task sequence. And here um, I'm going to select which uh, collection or group of servers that I want to onboard. I'm going to select my database servers. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing I want to show here is it gives you the ability to uh, force the, the, the task sequence to be run on the servers, or you can say that it's available. So the admins, for example, of those servers can choose when to do the onboarding uh, themselves. Mm. And then um, I need to select when this will run. Maybe I, I want to run it on a weekend at a specific time. Um, I can choose uh, the, the timing that suits my needs. Mm -hmm. And basically that's it. Um, once I, I continue this wizard, the task sequence is going to run on the servers. And I'm going to show you the experience from, from the server uh, right now. Okay. Uh, I have one prepared. Let me just switch quickly. So this is one of my database servers. Mm -hmm. um, once I open Software Center with, with, with where all of the deployments from SSCM appears, I can see my task sequence onboarding to Azure Arc. Mm -hmm. You can click on it, see some information, and install. And as this happens, you're going to start seeing the steps that I've done in the task sequence. So first, I'm installing the agent. This is happening totally locally from mm -hmm. within my, my, my premises. And once the agent gets installed, you're going to see the second step, which is the actual um, connection to Azure Arc. So, you know, this is really um, scale onboarding on steroids, right? Because exactly. it's really... It really takes a uh, few concepts when it comes to um, software distribution, but also the concept of Azure Arc enabled servers, which is you know rely relying on installing the connected machine agent and then hook it up into Azure. And I think that this really connects the dots in a in a traditional IT shops, right? When you have those package management, configuration management processes. SCCM, obviously, you know, one of the most uh, uh, known tools in that space. Uh, so, and I like the fact that it's, you know, been initiated from the server, right, in an offline fashion. So that's yes. cool. Agreed. Um, so now you can see that the second step is actually happening. This is where the PowerShell script is now running. Uh, it's checking the endpoints, doing uh, all the things that it should do. And then once this happens, I'm going to be able to see my server onboarded to Azure Arc. So uh, uh, this will just take a couple of seconds, and then uh, I'll go to the Azure portal to show you that, that the server gets uh, gets connected. And w one point uh, till this happens is that, as you said, it's it's totally at scale at, on steroids. You can deploy this to 1,000 on servers at the same time, and uh, without any effort, this can happen fully automated without any touch from the admin. So this is mm -hmm. a very good way to do scale onboarding to Azure Arc. So usually how much time it takes for you know multiple servers and how much time it will take for the server to appear in the portal? Like what 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 the user can expect? So to distribute the software itself, the agent itself, this this is the thing that would take uh, some time depending on the infrastructure, depending on how many distribution points and how big mm -hmm. is your environment. But the PowerShell command to connect should be instantaneous. So here you see after the task sequence is finished, mm -hmm. I have my servers connected already to Azure Arc. That's, that's pretty slick. I mean, you didn't do much. Um, you just initiated yeah. the deployment from the server. Yeah, okay, that's pretty exactly. cool. So this is one way that you would normally do this kind of onboarding. Uh, there is another uh, cool way to do so, which is using uh, PowerShell scripts. Uh, and this is a capability in Config Manager that allows you to just create a script and simply run it on a group of a group of co a collection of servers. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, so let me show you how this would look like. So here in Config Manager um, uh, under scripts, you can see that I have a couple of scripts uh, and the, it's simply the, sa the exact same as the onboarding uh, script in the portal. But the difference here is that I'm actually downloading the, the agent from the internet. So mm. it's a little bit different, but uh, again, it, because this is just a PowerShell script, so we need to get the agent somewhere. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is so this is more of an online connected version of you know what you Correct. did before. Okay. Correct. Correct. Um, and the cool thing here is that um, I can do the same path. I can go to my other uh, collection, the web servers, and right-click and click deploy. But here I'm going to do another another thing that uh, is very cool in Config Manager. So um, I'm going to uh, start something called CM Pivot. It's um, it's um, it's a method to query my infrastructure, similar like Log Analytics in Azure. And mm. what I'm going to do is is that I'm going to tell it show me all of the web servers that I have and install and onboard them to Azure Arc. So I'm going to say mm. here um, where, where the, the name of the, the role is, for example, IIS. So I'm going to say IIS web server role. And I'm just going to say it's installed. So the installation status equal one. And what this will do is it's going to query all my um, infrastructure uh, uh, Sorry, I have a typo. Let me get this. And that basically points into that basically points to the collection of servers that you created before, which you know kind of maps into what to where the agent is going to go and what are the servers that will be onboarded. Correct? Actually, this command is going to query all of my co configuration manager servers. Mm. So it's, okay. it, it it does that on all of the online servers. Now it's checking if they have the IIS role, and then it's going to list all of the servers that have the IIS role. Gotcha. So not not just limited to the collection. Okay. And I can simply just select all of them and just run the script. Select onboard to Azure Arc, and that's it. So online, I can run a query, select a specific servers based on my criteria and with a couple of clicks i can just distribute this powershell script and in a matter of seconds the script is gonna uh, run on the servers and they're gonna get onboarded to azure arc so that's so that's super powerful and also one thing that i'm thinking about as i'm seeing you know you demoing this is you know when you're doing this when you did this query on you know hey you know, where are all my IIS server and where are all my web servers? And obviously this can go into different roles. I'm thinking to myself that obviously with, with Azure Arc, one of the big things that I'm always advocating for is use tags, like use tags in order for that to me to be um, efficient as much as possible, uh, because that's where everything starts when it comes to compliance and all that. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. to myself, if the tags are mapped to the query or the roles of servers that you are finding as part of that query, that is a very strong combination, right? Because you are basically mapping the deployment to the environment, right? And then all the way to Azure, which creates like this complete, complete story of Azure Arc enabled servers in the context of fleet management and actually how things are starting. Um, so I really like that, and it's it's a pretty interesting concept that you're bringing here. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And and as you can see, it 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 just took a couple of seconds, and I can see the status of my script running, and I can get more details to see the output of the script uh, mm -hmm. if if there is any output. And um, going back to the portal, I can see that the rest of the nice. all of my web servers are now onboarded to Azure Arc. That's super, that's super cool. So, uh, you know, safe, I think that, you know, that was a great demo because it emphasized a lot of things, right? It's the scale onboarding, it's the create Azure Arc environment, um, you know, using existing configuration management tools. And that's one of the big things, right? Because always, you know, safe when you and I are talking and also when we're talking to customers, we always advocating to the fact that Azure Arc was designed with um, a non-destructive state of mind, meaning that we don't want you to change the tools that you're using in your organization in order to do the things that you used to do, right? One of those things is a lot of the time is, um, you know, software distribution and, and packages and all this stuff. So this is a great example to that. 
Yes, I totally agree. And and th this uh, th the specifically SACM is 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 used by most customers for managing Windows Server. So we're not we we're we're advocating use what you have now, which is SACM to onboard to Azure Arc and bring even more value to your uh, to your environment. So, Saif, to wrap things up, you created a couple of jumpstart scenarios for that, and obviously we're going to share it in the description uh, down below for this episode. And for the jumpstart audience, if you want to see more of these cool demos when we are releasing a new jumpstart lighting episode and bringing um, engineers like uh, like Saif, uh, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, so you will get notified. And the last thing that I want to do is to say, Saif, thank you uh, for coming to the jumpstart lightning show. That was a great demo. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of the cool things that you are doing with, uh, with Azure Arc. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye, everyone.